This is the most unique banjo I've ever made, mostly because of this sugar maple end grain fingerboard. It's the only instrument I've ever seen use end grain for the fingerboard. If you're not familiar with wood grain, boards are usually cut vertically out of the tree, like this. But the end grain is like looking straight down onto a stump and taking a board out of it like this. So you're looking right at, down at the tree's growth rings. I thought it'd be really cool to do a fingerboard like this because it would let you like look right at the growth rings of the tree that the wood came out of as you're playing the banjo right under your fingers. So yeah, anyone watching this that has seen this before, let me know because I wasn't able to find any examples of this and I think it's a really cool way to do it. So to get things started, we gotta go all the way back to upstate New York. I was there at the end of January this year. And a few years ago, I cut these rounds of sugar maple from a fallen tree in the woods. And I just had had them up in the barn waiting for some kind of project. I didn't know what. And I started just looking through them, and that's kind of where this whole thing started out. Then I took it down the road to my grandparents' house and brought it into my grandpa's barn. This is his barn where he has his wood shop. It's a really nice, cozy little wood shop, and it's where I learned how to do a lot of stuff. I've been working in there from the time I was a little kid, so it's always nice to come back. This is an eagle that my grandpa was working on while I was there. He does a lot of really nice chainsaw carvings now. So I'm marking out basically what I want the fingerboard to be, and then I brought it over to his uh, bandsaw and cut it out. It might be interesting to do a fingerboard like that. Yeah, I mean, I think if it if it works, it's going to be really cool. That's the if, though, if it works. And then while that epoxy was curing, I worked on the neck. And for the neck wood, I went back up to the barn and got this U log that I have been sitting on for years. Um, it's from my friend Andrew. It was growing in his yard, and U logs normally do not get this big. And there's my grandpa testing something out on the log. But yeah, I mean, look at the size of this U log. I think I counted it was like 60 or 70 years old. They just don't really get that big, so... I thought it would be a really unique neck wood for a really unique fingerboard. So now we're using the little chainsaw here to uh, try to get one sort of flat edge on this thing so that we can run it through the bandsaw and start squaring it up. And yeah, I know people are going to be mad at me because uh, we're really not winning any safety awards here. Um, but I, I do appreciate people looking out for me. It, and uh, when I read comments saying I'm going to cut my finger off and stuff, it it does put that in my mind. And I think I have been a little more careful lately as a result. <laughs> so so now that we got a sort of flat edge on this thing, we can run it through the uh, bandsaw more safely. You, you never want to cut anything round on the bandsaw because it's dangerous and uh, you wouldn't get a good cut anyway. And then we're running it through the table saw now that we now that we've got a more square edge on it. And then once we had four kind of square edges on it, we just started passing it through the planer a bunch of times. It was really nice to be back home and have all my grandpa's tools to use and have him help, there to help me. Um, it was it was real, just like uh, before I moved, so it was really nice. And yeah, I definitely miss having access to his shop and all his tools and all of his expertise, so... It was, uh, it was a pretty nice part of the trip to be able to, to do all that again. And we're finally able to kind of see the, the grain of this, and it looks really nice, and it's got this nice orange kind of color to it. And, yeah, just look at that. Look at that wood. It, it's such an interesting wood. Then the U wasn't long enough, and I didn't want to waste a lot of it, so I glued it up with the neck and the dowel and then I ran that all through the bandsaw after I got my sort of rough design traced out it took me a little while to figure out the peg head because I knew I wanted to do a scroll head and I wanted to include that knot at the top and I really wanted to get some of that live edge in there So it ended up uh, working out really well, I think. Then 
been back to all these fingerboards after letting the epoxy cure for about a day. I cut it to its uh, final width, and here's the big block of it. Making these cuts was a little scary because we didn't really know if it was uh, going to all come apart or how bad it was going to bow out. Um, my grandpa's pushing on it with the ruler there, and that helped a lot. And I think, uh, yeah, it seemed to work really surprisingly well. We were both surprised with how how uh, good they, they all came out, and we got three blanks out of that. Then I took all those fingerboard blanks and filled in all the remaining cracks with epoxy. And then once that epoxy kind of dried up a little, I weighted them all down to try to sort of flatten them out a little bit. Oops, be careful. I'm over here throwing them around. I scraped off a lot of the epoxy with this paint scraper. And at this point I was getting really excited because as you can see, this is actually two tree trunks that kind of grew together. So it goes from sapwood to the heartwood, back to sapwood, and then to bark. So I've got this bark layer right where the middle of the neck is going to be. And then it continues on for, and there's a whole other tree. So yeah, just the idea of being able to really see the tree in that way in the, in the finished piece was really exciting to me. We didn't know how it was going to work because of how unstable end grain can be. But, but yeah, I was getting really excited here. This is a crazy glue up because the end grain was so unstable that I just wanted as many clamps on there as possible. I think I had like 20 something clamps on there. I was getting really excited shaping out the neck because you can see it starting to take form and it's just such a cool looking unique concept for a, for a banjo so I was getting really excited at this point and this is a Amish gourd from Lancaster Pennsylvania which my grandpa picked up uh, the last time he was down there and he's been holding on to a few of them for me which was really nice of him so I grabbed this one picked this one out and very sloppily horribly cut it open um, you can see how uneven that is. That took me a while to fix. <laughs> so then I got back out here to LA and a couple months went by where I just kind of had this on the back burner and part of it I was trying to figure out what to use for the side dot fret markers. I wanted to use something of a smaller diameter than I was able to actually cut because I wanted to inlay them into the side of the, the maple. And I finally settled on using these brass rods. I'm really happy that I got them because since I bought them for this purpose, I've used them for a ton of other stuff. So it's just a, great to have a bunch of different sizes of brass rods around. And then after a few coats of shellac on this gourd, I started putting the skin on. The skin came out really good. I like to um, put the tacks a little farther away from the rim of the gourd now and... I don't use so many tacks anymore as I may be used to. I've never done this before with a build, but I've been having so much trouble getting this fingerboard all flattened out that I just decided to string it up and see like how bad it was buzzing before I put the finish on or before I even finished sanding or anything. Um, and I'm glad that I did because <laughs> It's pretty bad. So I mean that tells me pretty definitively, that, and I can even sort of see it. So there's some sort of bump or low spot right here. Anyways, this is just an alternative method, I guess, to, to uh, flattening it to let you really know where the low and high spots are, but yeah, this is really driving me crazy. It's pretty good. It took me a really long time, a lot of elbow grease to get this thing 
to the point where it is now, and it's been sitting. I think it shifted a little because <clears throat> um, these ridges, these little cracks that I filled in kind of uh, came up a little bit. Like I could run my finger over them and feel the cracks, which I couldn't do a week ago. So that worries me a little bit, but I think once I uh, just soak this thing with oil, I think that'll kind of help it out a lot. I spent a really long time sanding out this fingerboard and the rest of the neck. And then it was finally time to do the finish, and I was looking forward to it so much. And this is probably the most satisfying finish I've ever put on. So I'm just going to let these shots play out for a little bit. and boss but it's too good it sounds too good on these gourd banjos it's finally finished here it is um <clears throat> yeah this is definitely i would say my favorite banjo that i've built so far it's just it feels so amazing like to hold i i like can just sit here looking at it this this u is crazy i mean obviously the star of the show is this fingerboard but the U is just, I've never seen anything quite like it. I could just look at it for, for a long time, um, and I have been. But, and yeah, it sounds amazing. It feels amazing to play. So I've got it with a pretty tall bridge. Um, the action's pretty high right now. I've been kind of liking playing these with higher action lately. It just kind of, they're sort of the like responsiveness is a little better. Um, I think, but yeah, and then another thing about this, I can't play two finger very well because I hit my finger with a, my pointer finger with a hammer, um, so I have to kind of use my middle finger, but. I wish I could demonstrate this a little better. Um, I'm gonna get a different camera. You know, if the sun's gone, I'm gonna do another camera angle because this was really to optimize the sun. I really wish my finger wasn't hit by a hammer so I could really demonstrate the how good this thing sounds to finger. It's, it's really nice. To... 
this plays up the neck better than almost anything I've made. And coincidentally, this is one of my favorite little things about this, where this bottom tree trunk, where this bark, at the very beginning of this bark on the lower side, it, it exactly lines up where the ninth fret would be. <laughs> so you can play like, Oh, the sun's coming back out. Maybe it'll backlight me. I used a lot of steel wool on this neck, really fine steel wool and just lots of layers of shellac and lots of uh, coats of um, teak oil. And that gives it this really nice matte finish that feels really good to play. <laughs> starting to rain. This is, this sucks. I think between the end grain fingerboard and the U neck, um, this has got to be one of the most unique gourd banjos out there. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just really surprised no one's that I've never seen anyone do this before because it's so cool. It's so inch. It's so like nice to be able to just you know count the growth rings in the tree and just see the whole you know, the whole story, the whole life of the tree and have the bark in here. It's so, it's so interesting to me. Thanks to my friend Andrew for giving me this yew wood and thanks to my grandpa for helping me with a lot of the beginning of this process of making this one. And, um, yeah, I think this will be for sale eventually. Um, I'm not quite ready to sell it yet just cause I want to keep it around. Um, for maybe like another month or so, just to make sure that, you know, this fingerboard doesn't do anything crazy as it's as it sits around. And I don't know, we're getting into summer here, so things might dry out a little more. I noticed this head is already, it was always really tight, but it's a little tighter than it even was now. Um, yeah, as we get into summer here and it starts to warm up, I just wanna make sure that, you know, nothing crazy happens. But if you're interested in this, definitely shoot me an email and get dibs on it. But yeah, it'll be it'll be available soon. I just want to make sure.